Okay, <clears throat> here's a, a table problem. Seem to give us lots of trouble. Uh, gives us two functions, f and g, and they also give us our, their derivatives. And they say that um, g is strictly increasing, so 2, 3, 4, and 6, c, you can see that. Uh, the function h is defined by the following. Composite f of g of x and then minus 6. So let's go on to part a. Part a says explain why there must be a value between 1 and 3 where h is equal to negative 5. So I guess the first thing we can do is figure out what is h of 1, right? So h of 1, just following the rules of composition, we have the function value g of 1, and then we're going to subtract 6. So start with the inside, g at 1 is equal to 2. So this is really just the function value at 2 minus 6, and the function value at 2 is equal to 9, so we have 9 minus 6 equals 3. So somewhere over here at 1, 3, we have our first value, right? And then looking at the other end, h of 3, same thing. And up g of 3, subtract 6. So g of 3, g of 3 takes me to 4. So we have f of 4 minus 6. f of 4 is negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. So when you go over to 3, we're way down here at negative 7. So they want to they want us to verify that there's some value for h in between. So this function, I don't even really know what it's doing, but it's continuous, which they tell us it is. You start off at this point three and you go down to negative seven. Somewhere along the line, it has to intersect. Maybe it's at two point nine. Maybe it's at one point two. Who knows? And this little concept, if you recall, is called the Intermediate Value Theorem. And it's true for continuous functions. So a justification would be, well, this math that you just provided, and you can say by the Intermediate Value Theorem, And since negative 5 is greater than a negative 7 and less than 3. Okay. All right. The next part, part B says, explain why there must be a value for C in between the same intervals, 1 to 3, so that the derivative of c equals a negative 5. Well, since we took the time to draw a little graph over here, we can see that the second line forms between those two endpoints of 1 and 3. Uh, A negative slope, right? Well, let's let's calculate what that slope is. Maybe I shouldn't have erased that. Uh, let's not use yellow. Let's go back to black. We have uh, h at three. Hang on a sec. Okay, so we have h of three minus h of one, and 3 minus 1 gives me what? 2? Well, h at 3 
we recall was what? 3, negative 7. So we have the function value for h is negative 7. And at 1, it was what? Just a 3. So this is a negative 10 over 2. And, oops, and that equals a negative 5. So what is this? This tells me that by the mean value theorem, we can prove this. So the derivative at some c value has to equal the slopes of the secant line that's formed by these two points here. All right. Okay, let's take a look at part C. Okay, so part A we did the intermediate value theorem. And part B we used the mean value theorem. So part C looks like we're using a portion of the second, the second fundamental theorem of calculus because they're asking us about the derivative at 3. And W is defined by the integral. And we have some value in here, some function value in here, g of x. So if we take the derivative of the left, if we take the derivative of the integral, we're just going to replace the g of x with the t. Be careful here, because t is buried inside of this function. So w prime is equal to the function value g of x, right? And this is just not x, it's g of x. So you got to think chain rule and multiply by the derivative of g of x. Alright? So, and they're specifically asking us, well, what is it at 3? So, we have f g of 3 times g prime at 3. And we know we had g prime 3 is equal to 2, right? And g at 3 is equal to 4. So we need the function value of 4 times that 2. So f at 4 is equal to a negative 1. So we have negative 1 times 2, and that equals a negative 2. Okay, part D. <coughs> part D says that uh, if the inverse g to the negative 1 is the inverse function of g, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph at y equals g of negative 1 at x equals 2. So at x equals 2, well, what is g of 2? Let's take a look at that first. g of 2, let's slide up a little bit. g of 2 is equal to 3. Okay, let's look at part D. They're talking about the inverse function of G. And they want us to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph. So we're thinking we have to take the derivative of the inverse here in a minute. Um, but they're looking for the inverse at x equals 2. And remember, we're dealing with G in this problem. So at x equals 2, Remember, the inverse is where the x's and y's swap places. So here, the y value is equal to 2 when x equals 1. So one way of thinking about this is g of 1 equals 2. That means the inverse at 2 equals 1. So here we just swap the y value for the inverse 
x value and the regular function x value became the y value for the inverse. So that's going to be important to keep in mind. And so basically um, we need to calculate the derivative of an inverse function. And if you if you ever forget how to take the derivative of an inverse function, if you forget to memorize that formula, which I suggest you do, uh, you can always calculate it by this. Remember there's a relationship for inverses that say if you take the composite of a function and its inverse function, in order for it to really be an inverse, it has to equal x. It always equals x. So um, let's take a look at taking the derivative. Well, if you take the derivative of the left-hand side, this is a chain rule, right? The big picture is I'm taking the derivative of a function. So you don't touch the this part, which is the inverse. Then you have to multiply it by the derivative get kind of messy here. And what's the derivative with respect to x of x? Just one, right? And what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to find the derivative of the inverse, which is this. So that's what we're trying to solve for. So we would divide this entire term out, and this is the formula you should memorize. The derivative of the inverse is equal to 1 over the derivative of the function at the inverse portion. Okay? So that's a, if you forget how to, uh, if you forget to memorize it or you get stuck, that's one way to bail you out. Alright. Well, I'm going to erase this part. And we're going to keep this here because we're going to need this. So we're basically looking for, we need to know the derivative at 2. So it's 1 over the derivative of the function. And let's switch to g, since that's what the problem's asking us for. And inverse. Okay, so the inverse at 2 is equal to 1, so we have g prime at 1, and g prime at 1 is equal to 5, just right from the table. So what is our slope? Our slope is equal to 1 fifth. That's the derivative at 2. So what we're looking for is okay, and we took a little time up here to write this back down. So what is the inverse at 2? It's equal to 1. So we have y minus 1 is equal to 1 fifth of x minus 2. That's the equation of the line tangent to this inverse. Uh, let's see. They are, they are asking us to solve for y, right? So we could take the extra step and move that one over and we should get full credit for that. Alright. 